Okay, so there is still quite an obvious exception to the title of this video. You do still need to actually go and get a brain scan before you can put your brain inside of Blender. Blender isn't really capable of scanning your brain yet. I don't think it ever will be, but I mean, hey, you never know. But anyway, this video is going to show you about a free tool that my friend Ben, Cartesian Caramel, has put up on Gumroad that will help you get volumetric and even 3D mesh volumes of your brain or any other scan that you have. If it's like an MRI or a CT scan that ultimately gives you image scan slices. This all started with a recent video of mine called I put my brain into blender. I recommend giving that a watch if you're interested in seeing the kinds of things you can do with this. I've also put a blog post up on my website kind of explaining the process and some of the discoveries I made. So if you're interested in playing around with this, like I said, Ben has put the scan data visualizer version one up on their Gumroad and contained in this are two files. There's the actual scan data visualizer file, which we're going to take a look at. And then there's the image flipbook packer. If you go into the rendered view on the uh, visualizer file, it's quite a slow file because we got all of these things active at once. Uh, but you can see that we have have the shader volume on the left, we have a geo nodes volume, and then we have a geo nodes meshed object, and then on the right we have my snail, my labyrinth, my inner ear. So basically, this is the thing inside your inner ear which kind of helps you interpret balance, it gives you balance signals. Uh, this was actually extracted from my brain scan, and we thought it'd be kind of funny to include like a little piece of myself that we've been studying inside of this file. So, yes, if you download this, um, you will actually have a piece of me. Anyway, the way this technique works is if you manage to get your hands on the image slices of any scan that you take part in, you basically need to convert them into a tiled image, which we're calling a flipbook. And this is quite reminiscent of like sprite animation design in other industries like game development, where you've basically got just a bunch of images stacked together. And if you flick through them over time, it can look like an animation's appearing. We're not really doing animations here, but the same kind of principle applies, where by having all of the slices together in one image, we can take that image into the shader editor or geo nodes, then virtually split it down into a grid and consider each of those points as the next slice along. So basically you're building them up together into a 3D volume. Anyway, once you have your flipbook image, if we re-enable the shader version and click on the object, you can see that in the shader nodes, Ben has kindly given us an example of how to interpret the flipbook. Uh, the main heavy work is actually done in the layer stacking node group here, which you can take a look at. Obviously, there's a lot of vector math going on for mapping the slices to the 3D volume. This kind of vector math is a bit above me, which is why I had to get Ben to help out with this brain project. Then you basically plug in the flipbooks to the image inputs here. And then from here, you have control over the density and the color. One thing to keep in mind about the density is that depending on how messy the original scan data is, when you're increasing the density, what you're effectively doing is multiplying the influence of the whiter values, like the whiter pixels of the scan data for the volume. What that also means is that if you're kind of over densifying it, then you may effectively be multiplying grayscale values. So in the end, what can happen is that you might make some of the scan data look thicker than it actually is in real life. So obviously, if you're using this for diagnosis, that's one thing you want to keep in mind, that you don't want to accidentally mess up your interpretation just by trying to make something look physically more solid inside of a rendering engine. Now, for the question of how do you actually make the flipbooks, one of the files that Ben provided in this package is the flipbook generator. So this is a geometry nodes powered tool, and I'll show you how to use it. So if you open the flipbook file, this might look a bit like confusing and bare bones to start with, but it's actually quite a simple principle. So we have a camera, if you look into the camera view, because it's a one by one aspect ratio rendering square. So the idea is that we want to get the image slice is imported and then have them automatically line up inside of the square to be rendered out. And that becomes your flipbook. The way we do this is by putting images inside of the images collection here. You see in the top right where it says images place images as planes. So there's one example square here already. We can just delete this, but I'll just show you that if I delete it and move it around, every time I do that, it's going to add another one to our one by one aspect ratio flipbook as you can see here. So then of course the question becomes, how do we get the image slices from our scans actually into Blender? Well, first of all, you need to have the import images as planes add-on enabled. So we go to edit preferences, and then you go to the add-ons tab and then look for image. You'll see that we have the import, export, import images as planes. This is a very useful add-on. It's been around forever, or well, not literally forever. It does exactly what it says. It lets you import image files that you have, and then it brings them into the 3D view as planes, maintaining their aspect ratio as well. So now if I go to file, import, and and then images as planes, this new section will appear here. You can then go and find your scan data if you manage to get hold of it. Now with some of my scan files, it looks like some of the data was missing, as you can see that there's uh, jumps in the increments between these files, but some of them seem more complete. So I'm gonna take the first and then scroll down, hold shift, and then click on the last image slice. So we have all of them selected. And then in the material settings, I've got it set to emit, and then I'm going to import the images as planes. Now, the reason why I set the material to emit is because this is an unlit scene. So if we left it on the normal shader values, um, 
time, all the images would be black unless we put like a sunlight in. So I've got all the images selected. I'm just going to move them backwards so they're out of the way of the camera view, even though it won't really matter too much. Then if I look back through the camera, we can see that these images have already been lined up. Now, if you put your own image slices in, you might notice that some of them are hanging off the frame and that basically there's too many image slices or not enough to fill up the square. That's why with this plane object selected, if we check in the modifier stack, we have the geometry nodes tree image packer and you can change the rows slash columns value to basically compensate and fit in more of the slices. So then once you've got that fit in, it's just a matter of pressing render and then render image. And then this is essentially your flipbook. So you can save these out and import them into the visualizer file or do whatever else you want with them. So again, back in the visualizer file, you can click on any one of these templates and then go in and replace the images here with your own tiled image. After doing this, you may need to mess with things a little bit like the scale or the overall shape of the geometry just to make sure that whatever was contained inside of your scan actually fits into the volume properly. Um, but then once you've got that, there are some really cool things you can do. For example, for the shader volume, we can click on one of the sides and then essentially slice through the scan. So if we take a look in the rendered view, I might need to disable the GeoNodes versions as well. Um, you can see here that as I move the side face back and forth, we can essentially look inside of the scan data. So that's great. I think you can get some like really cool visual styles and looks with this. Also, we can restrict the density as well. So it's effectively just restricting the range of like the black to white pixels. So the things which are white, like the tissues or the bone most picked up by the scan method can be left existing in the scene, whereas all the other stuff can be clipped off. So in this case, because this is a CT scan, which is using X-ray, so it picks up bone more, restrict it so the skull is there and effectively remove the rest of the tissues, like the brain and all the other junk inside your head. So that's the shader volume. Now we can move on to the geometry nodes examples. So there are a couple of examples. They're quite inefficient um, in terms of like the performance of the scene. So if I open up the geo nodes editor, you can see here, it's effectively the same method again, but the node layout is a bit different. So again, we have the flipbook image here, which you can replace with your own tiled image. But really the main reason you'd use the geometry nodes version is to get a mesh of some of the scan data. So this is really cool because actually having something properly solid gives you something you can work with. You know, you could take this, convert it to a proper a mesh sculpt on top of it, use it for artistic purposes or visualization still, and basically do anything you want with it. One thing to say about the uh, geometry nodes versions is that a lot of the parameters have been exposed here. So for example, you don't have to set the image manually inside of the nodes. You can do it on the modifier stack here on the right, see where we have the object selected. We can choose image and then we can replace this with our own flipbook image. So again, another thing to consider when you're putting the images into the scan objects is in the same way that we had to change a value to fit all the slices onto the flipbook, we also need to make sure we're using the right value when reading it as well. So for example, you can see that if I change the flipbook rows value here, it's going to get all messed up because we need to have it on the right setting, in this case 16, so it knows exactly how to slice out that flipbook. If you count them up, you'll see that there are 16 slices along the top row there, so that makes sense. And then the height scale, this is kind of more of an interpretive value, I suppose, because this is what you can do to change the height of it. So basically how far it's stretching. There may be a way to extract data from the image slices to get an accurate value for that, but for now it's kind of mostly just interpretation. And then in the case of this physical voxelized version, there are extra parameters here kind of changing the density and the quality. So one more thing to keep in mind about these examples is that both of these objects require different shaders like material shaders. For example, if I click on the volume version, you'll see that there's the geo volume shader applied. And that's noted here in the parameters on the right. If I click on the physical version, so the mesh, there's just a geo shader rather than a geo volume shader. Notice that one of them is plugged into the surface and one of them is plugged into the volume output of the material output node. But what's important is that they've been assigned properly in the geometry nodes parameters on the right. So again, if you do have your hands on any scan data in the form of image slices, it doesn't specifically have to be, you know, head and skull related. Then again, it doesn't even have to be specifically MRI or CT scan related. If you just have a bunch of slices that you want to represent as a volume or a voxelized mesh, then by combining this flipbook method and the visualizer, you'll be able to get that done pretty easily. So again, I will leave a link to the free Gumroad download in the description. Thank you, Ben, for making that available to people. I know this will have limited utility, especially for my audience. Like realistically, what percentage of people actually go and get, you know, scans done like this? And then separately, what percentage of those get their hands on the image slices? If you have had a scan done, there may be different methods for 
getting your hands on the data. Here in the UK, I went to a private hospital. I had to fill out like a data release form in which I had to explain what I wanted and then get a witness to sign it as well. It was like a whole process. It didn't used to be like that. They used to give you a CD when you got the scan done. But basically, depending on where you are in the world, there may be a different process for getting your hands on the data. So yeah, if you made it this far, consider putting a bone emoji in the comments. That way you'll be able to see which of you did make it this far through the video. And of course, if you like Blender resources, consider checking out some of mine at codisol.online slash store. I think it's funny how there are a bunch of us creators just busily running around making resources for all of you. So yeah, have fun. Let me know what you think. Special thanks to the patrons as well. Patreon.com slash Curtis Holt. So yeah, have a great day and I will see you next time.